Welcome back, it's me Lou, and I'm here for another unboxing and review, and today we are coming at you with this, the G.I. Joe Ninja Speed Cycle Construction Set. It's 44 pieces, and it's ages 5 and up, and as you can see here, it's Snake Eyes, and... Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, this was kind of a very unexpected discovery found at my local mall um, a few weeks ago. So truth be told, uh, this has been sitting in my review pile for maybe like three, three or four weeks now. Um, originally when I purchased this, my hopes was to do a live stream um, and build this online, you know, live through YouTube, but my internet the past few weeks, it's been really shoddy. We've been getting a lot of disconnects. So um, as much as I'd love to do a live video, it's just, I don't think it's gonna happen right now just because um, my internet connection, like our internet service provider, they've been doing a lot of maintenance in our area for like, <laughs> for like the entire pandemic and it's always shoddy. There's some weeks where it's perfectly fine. And then there's other weeks where we're being constantly disconnected. Um, so that kind of shoots down my hopes of doing a live stream. And it's unfortunate because I really want to do one, especially for like building like construction kits like Lego. So moving back to this set, um, I found this maybe about a month ago or even maybe a little bit further than that at my um, local mall. Um, there's a store in my mall called Go Calendars Games and Toys. It's a weird store because initially it was a pop-up store that would always pop up during the holidays. Uh, their primary business at, in, initially was selling calendars. So it always pop up during like October or November, you know, shortly before Christmas and um, the winter season. And they would sell ca primarily calendars. And then it, it was like every year it seemed like they would add on more. It'd be like um, board games and then toys, action figures. And eventually this pop-up store just kind of remained a permanent fixture at my mall. And every now and, every now and then they get uh, toys in. And what's surprising is that they'll get like new action figures before some of the other retailers in the mall or even before some of the online retailers. Like I found MODOK, um, the Marvel Legends MODOK at the store like maybe like a, a couple of weeks before I even went live on Amazon. It was It's wild. But I was at the mall um, maybe a month ago. And then I ran into this. It surprised me. It's I didn't know they still made um, G.I. Joe building kits. So if for, for those of you that have been in the game for a while, you'll know that Hasbro and um, their G.I. Joe property, even their Transformers property, they kind of dabbled a little in terms of like um, construction kits that were a lot like Lego. Um, back in the, I want to say maybe the mid-2000s, Hasbro had a line of construction kits called built to rule um, is also known as BTR and they offered that with um, Transformers and GI Joe and it's interesting though because the GI Joe built to rule construction kits um, you'd get to build like a vehicle but then I, th I believe they came with a three and three quarter figure not a, not like a Lego mi minifig but like an actual GI Joe figure uh, correct me if I'm wrong but that's what I kind of vaguely remember and I believe they also made Transformer kits and then maybe in the early 2010s, I want to say around the time period of like Transformers, maybe Dark of the Moon or maybe it was um, Age of Extinction, um, those live action movies, Hasbro released a line of um, Lego style building kits. They had some for G.I. Joe and they also had a set designed for Transformers. And I actually like those a lot. Those are really cool. And I'm not sure if most people know this, but I think those building kits were actually, even though they were um, distributed um, by Hasbro and they had the Hasbro, um, you know, lab label on them, I believe they were actually manufactured by uh, a competitive um, brick building brand. I think it might have been Colby Bricks. Uh, I believe that's the name of the company. They make um, Lego style construction kits. And they're like an alternative Lego, but they're not mainstream. You can find their kits on like Amazon. They make, um, they actually make some, I believe some like licensed properties like Top Gun, uh, World of Tanks. And their stuff is actually really, their stuff is actually really good. It's not at this, the, the production quality isn't at the same level of Lego, but it's pretty close. So they manufactured the building brick kits for 
um, Transformers and for Hasbro. The Hasbro stuff was I, I dabbled a little with the Transformer stuff. Unfortunately, I didn't really get into the, the GI Joe, and I was kind of upset about that. Looking back, I think that was a bad decision on my behalf because I'm pretty into Lego. But they made some really cool kits. They even made like a Terradome playset, look, which looked amazing, and they made some um, vehicles, lots of vehicles, and it was kind of cool because. You know, since they had the Transformers brand and the G.I. Joe brand under a kind of like a, a Lego theme, it was, was kind of cool because you could kind of mix the universes together. And, it's, and it, I think in addition to having the um, Creo, which is the name of the, the Hasbro branded Lego style bricks. there. So there was Creo Transformers. There was Creo G.I. Joe. I believe they dabbled a little bit with uh, Creo Dungeons and Dragons. And Creo Battleship, which was based off of the live-action Battleship movie at the time. But unfortunately, those lines, I don't think it saw more than a, a year or two of um, distribution. So it kind of went the way of the dinosaur. So I was at the mall like a month ago. And um, <laughs> truth be told, I was at the, I was actually at the, the, my, my local mall playing Pokemon Go. Because it was a Pokemon Go community day. And sometimes we'll play Pokemon Go at the mall. Um... And especially for the community day, community day event. And this community day event kind of wrapped up. And, you know, I, I kind of wanted to do a little bit of shopping at the mall before I left. So I stopped by the um, Go Calendar Games and Toy Store in hopes of finding some action figures. And then I was looking through the shelves and then I saw this. I'm like, what the hell is that? You know, it's G.I. Joe. It's, you know, apparently it's licensed because this is like the legit artwork. The legit logo. And then, but... It, it took me by surprise because I'm like, I thought Hasbro stopped making the Lego style kits. And uh, um, I was, to my surprise, I flipped it over on the back and then there's the Hasbro logo. But what's even crazier is that the copyright on here is, it's actually 2020. So this kit came out last year, which blew my mind. Um, I don't remember seeing anything about this on some of the, G I mean, I could be wrong. I don't go to the GI Joe boards like on a daily basis. But I don't remember ever recall seeing this on the G.I. Joe boards. Um, so I was, I was kind of surprised. It blew my mind. I'm like, wow, there's a new G.I. Joe building set kit. It's actually licensed by Hasbro. And it came out last year, 2020. So I'm wondering if this is something that went below the radar. Like, um, just because of the pandemic. Maybe distribution was bad. And maybe, um, you know, it just wasn't talked about. And... Uh, because, I mean, I follow um, the G.I. Joe and Hasbro, like, social media, like, on Instagram. And not once last year do I remember them mentioning anything like this. You know, they've talked about, you know, the classified series, the toys, the video game. But I did not know there was a construction set kit. So I immediately bought this because I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Because I'm into Legos. And uh, for me, it was kind of very surprising to find this. Especially the fact that this was 20, this, you know, this was copywritten 2020. At first I thought this was maybe like an old toy, like a holdover from like the last time they made construction sets. But I was pleasantly surprised. I'm like, wow, this, you know, this was, this was supposed to come out last year. So my guess is most likely the pandemic probably disrupted distribution and maybe it, this is a, it was intended to be a longer lasting line and maybe this got short, short cut. But I was, I was, you know, pleasantly surprised. They bought it. it. I got it for $9.99, which is, you know, it's not bad. You know, you get a, a minifig that looks like Snake Eyes, and you get this crazy-looking motorcycle. I'm also guessing that maybe this was the release of this was to coincide with the Snake Eyes movie, which um, was postponed a couple of times because of the pandemic. But you know, the movie eventually came out. Um, as you've known, I've reviewed some of the action figures already. So yeah, let's take a look at this. So what we have here is the G.I. Joe Ninja Speed Cycle Construction Set. It's 44 pieces. Um, it comes with one minifig, 44 pieces. You got the, the small parts warning, uh, ages 5 and up. It comes with a Snake Eyes minifigure, and you get the Ninja Speed Cycle. And just like a lot of the off-brand Lego stuff, they always want to reassure you that it's compatible with other brands, meaning this will work with Lego. Um, on the top, the G.I. Joe logo. On the sides, the logo again. And then you get the 
image of the vehicle. It's kind of cute that they this little like um, symbol here indicating the figure in the 44 pieces. Like if you're looking at this box from a distance, you'd swear that this was supposed to be the Hasbro logo. So it's kind of clever that they put that there to kind of like trick you. But you do get the Hasbro logo on the back, so it's an officially licensed product. As I stated before, this was copywritten in 2020. Blows my mind. Um, this is produced by a company called Forever Clever. It sounds like maybe it's an educational brand, I'm guessing. Um, they do have a website, foreverclever.com. Um, and if you're interested in finding this, like I said, I found this at the Go. So it's spelled G-O exclamation mark, and I believe it's called Calendars, Games, and Toys. I purchased this at the Woodfield Mall location, which is located in Schaumburg, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. And that's, I mean, if you're curious about my, my shopping mall, it's shopwoodfield.com. Um, it's one of the biggest tourist attractions in, in the state of Illinois. And at one time in the 1970s, I believe in 1978, it was actually considered the largest mall, I think in North America. And it's still around. It's I go there often. I love that place. Celebrating its 50th anniversary, I believe. But um, enough about that. Let's get back to this. So what's even crazier is that you look on here, it says collect them all. They have the Snowcat. Um, this is a interesting vehicle, surveillance and patrol. It looks like an um, anti-aircraft Jeep with like a missile launcher on top. You have the Ninja Commando 4x4. Um, which it kind of looks like that one Joe vehicle. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, the Aw Striker. It kind of looks like the Aw Striker. And then there's the Sky Stock Sky Striker right here. And I haven't I haven't seen these at my mall, but I do have another set. Um, I'm saving this review for another video, but this blows my mind even more so. They had this. They had the Cobra Hiss construction set, 100 pieces. Um, the box is kind of big, but uh, you might have to turn <laughs> you might have to turn your head upside down. But here's the build of the um, the Hiss tank, and here's a better view. Here's the Hiss tank again. Um, comes with a driver, and here's more vehicles, which blows my mind. There's a Rattler, a Ferret, a Fang, and a Night Raven. Wow. You know, so, and these are copywritten in 2020. So, here it is, 2020. So, like I said, I don't know what the distribution is on, on these. I don't know if this toy line still exists. I don't know if this was just a fluke that these came out. Um, but I I got the His Tank and I got the, the motorcycle. So, for now, I'm, I'm content with that. But if I ever ran into any of these, especially the Rattler or the Night Raven or the Sky Striker, you could... You know, bet your bottom dollar, I'd definitely buy those in a heartbeat. Um, so yeah, this I'm saving this one for a future review. Um, likewise, this was something I was I had high hopes of building on a live stream, but that's probably not going to happen just because you know my internet connection is kind of shoddy. But back to the main event. Um, let's get to this. So we'll see if I could build this. In one sitting, I mean, it's only 44 pieces. It's a small little motorcycle. I don't think it's anything overly complicated. Oh man, oh, wow, this is cool. Okay, so uh, what we have here is we have a it comes with a sticker sheet. Um, and there you go, the ha officially licensed by Hasbro. Crazy, crazy. I don't know if I'm gonna. I hate applying stickers on Legos. It's like the most nerve-wracking thing for me. I never get them on straight. Um, here's the instructions. It looks like a pretty easy build. So it looks like these. this comes with some unique pieces that aren't, um, you know, available with Lego. Like the chassis of the um, motorcycle looks like a very big, solid piece. And then there's kind of like the frame. Uh, you assemble the wheels. Yeah, so this looks like a quick build. Um, so we have our baggie of motorcycle pieces here. And then we have uh, um, the Snake Eyes figure right here. And it looks like your traditional kind of like Lego inspired minifig. Um, and real quick, let's build this up. Um, let's start with Snake Eyes first because I know that's what most of you probably want to see. 
Now, my desk is kind of on a slant. I'm working on a drafting table, so I don't want the pieces to roll. So I'm just going to put this, like, anti, like, um, slip thing right here just to prevent my pieces from rolling away. All right, so got to be careful here. Don't want these to roll off my desk. Um... Okay, so um, let's <clears throat> let's start assembling this. All right, so it looks like it's kind of like your traditional Lego guy. So we have the body. Uh, this looks like the waist. I'm not sure if if um, yeah. So the prints on the torso, it's pretty decent. It's almost at the same quality of leg, I'd say. The plastic feels uh, comparable. This may be a little bit cheaper. Um, so let's attach this here and then let's get the legs on. So for me, this is pretty self-explanatory. I'm not sure if there's instructions for assembling the, all right, that's a pretty tight fit. We're getting the legs on. As you can see here, the plastic quality isn't the greatest. There's some flash on there. So I could probably just scrape that off. Right, so there we got that. Un this sucks. Oh no, that doesn't suck. Okay, so Snake Eyes. At first, I thought that little nub on his face was like a piece of fla excess flash from the plastic, but that's actually his nose. So his nose is sculpted in. He has the three-panel visor. So this is like Snake Eyes version two. And let's get his arms on. Yeah, so this is very comparable to a Lego minifig. It looks like it's about the same size. Uh, the quality isn't the same. And I don't know if I have this on backwards. I don't know. And I'm gonna try I'm trying to this decipher whether or not his hands are if one's intended for the left hand or one's or the right, or if they're universal. They appear to be universal, so I, I guess I could plug them anywhere. And it's kind of, it's like I said, it's kind of messy. There's a piece of excess flash right there on his wrist. Maybe I could take that off real quick. I should have cleaned it up before. I just noticed it now. There you go. So yeah, let's take a close look at him. Um, if I bring him too close to the camera, he's going to go out of focus. All right, so here's Snake Eyes, the minifig. Very Lego, very Lego like, very Lego inspired. Let me grab a, a legit Lego mini guy so we could do a comparison. Just give me a second. Okay, this is not a legit Lego guy. <laughs> this is this is actually, I mean, this is actually made from like um, legit Lego pieces. But if you're familiar with the Lego world, um, there's companies out there that dabble with custom printing on. Um, the minifigs. So what they do is they take legit Lego pieces and they'll custom print the graphics on them. So here's a Fallout um, Wasteland, I believe, Survivor or Vault Dweller character. This is the female one. Uh, it's third party. I don't remember the company that makes it. I believe I got this at Brick Mania like years ago. So this is actually a legit Lego pieced figure, minifigure. And then here's the, um, uh, the G.I. Joe one. And as you can see, the quality is a little bit different. This one looks like it's a little bit bigger by like a hair. Or they're roughly the same size. Um, the build quality on the bootleg one, <laughs> it's not bootleg, but it's kind of a knockoff. It's not as quality as the legit Lego piece one. But the scale is the same. Um, I wonder if the pieces are interchangeable. Yeah, so there you go. The pieces are interchangeable, so if you want to give... Um, snake eyes, like a helmet or whatever, it'll work. Yeah, so uh, there's the snake eyes. Let's get you back. All right. Oh, let me show you another cool guy I have. This is, this is, um, it's not the legit armor piece, but... So in the in the world of third-party Legos, there's some cool stuff like 
Here's a Halo inspired inspired Spartan, and here's another one. Um, I think I swapped out the body armor on this one, but you know, I'll give you a good idea. So you have the Spartan helmet. Yeah, the world of Lego is really cool. There's a lot of cool third party third party stuff out there. So if you're interested, you know, you know, Google that stuff. Um, all right, so let's get to this. Um, I'm hoping I don't make a mess and drop the pieces everywhere, especially the smaller ones. So I'm just going to be try to be very careful. Ah, okay. All right, so here we go. Um, uh, these tires are rolling away. Why did they give me so many tires? All right, so I'll put snake eyes aside for now. Um, let's lay out the pieces. So there's this term in like, I believe it's called knolling and knolling is where you like organize your pieces before you build so you kind of group your pieces together uh, just so when you it's time to build your legos it's easier to find them so i'm just gonna do that real quick especially since there's only so many so many pieces i'm just gonna knoll out my bricks and If you're a Lego fan or a Lego builder, um, leave a comment below because I'd love to do more Lego content. Um, just because I'm kind of into Lego. Not as hardcore as I used to be. And crap, I dropped a piece. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm, I, I kind of want to get back there. The hardest thing with Lego is that it's like, where do you keep them? I have so many, I collect a lot of Star Wars um, Legos, and especially the vehicles, they get so big that they kind of take over everywhere. Alright, I think this is almost all the pieces. Alright, so this is me being OCD and just organizing everything. Um, Alright, let's get this done with so we start building. Yeah, so let me know. If you want to see more LEGO content, just leave a comment below. Um, I'm not, it's, I'm, it's not like I'm going to be like one of those hardcore LEGO guys that's going to review every kit. More so, I think I'll just take a look at my custom builds and stuff I just have in my collection. Um, I don't buy as many new LEGOs as I used to. Just because I think I kind of have everything I want. And it, LEGOs get kind of pricey. Alright, so there we go. These are all the pieces, and let's start building. Alright, so the first step um, is we're going to grab the chassis, and it needs two wheels. It's crazy, it comes with the two wheels, but it comes with five tires. <laughs> so, I don't know why that is. I'm not going to question it. Um, it's good for me because, I, you know, if I need them for future builds, I, I could do that. It'd make more sense if they gave you extra wheels for this, but they don't. And then, uh, right, so I'm kind of leery on the tolerance of these plastics. I don't know how rigid they are, if they're kind of brittle or not, especially since it's kind of like an off-brand. So we'll see how well stuff assembles and puts together. And right now, it's not happening. Okay, there we go. We got one wheel in. Let's get the other one on. So it's kind of, if you look here, it's notched right there and there so the axles just place in and then you just kind of shove it in there until it's until the axles get into the, the sockets which is proven to be quite difficult right now it's not happening oh, crap oh I kind of wish um, Hasbro uh, had more commitment to do. I don't, like I don't know how successful they were financially with doing some of their uh, building set kits, but for me, I always enjoyed it because it was a it was a chance to be creative with like you know toys that or at least brands that I was very fond of. Like you know, it's kind of cool that you get to design or make your own GI like legit GI Joe vehicles using building bro building bricks likewise with transformers um this is very difficult 
Right, so I got I think I got both wheels in. One doesn't want to fit in like as well as the other. Alright. Yeah, see here this this axle went into the socket, the other one It's not really happening. It's aligned with it, but I don't know. I don't think the axle is long enough. So I think that's going to be an issue. It's hard to see in this light. Yeah, this is. Yeah, so the build quality of this. It's not on the same level as a Lego. Like the axle here is lined up with the socket, but it's not going in. And I'm not I'm not gonna force it. It's aligned, but it's not going in. Um, let me try one more time. Let me try to get this out. Yeah, it's, I, it's, this doesn't want to come out either. So it's like I don't want to wreck, wreck, uh, risk wrecking it. So what I'm guessing is maybe this axle on one side, the peg might be too thick and it doesn't want to go into this hole. All right, but that's all right. I'm not going to force it. Or am I? Oh, let me try one more time. Um, ow, ow, ow. Yeah, I can't get this out. All right, so this is kind of frustrating. Plus, like I said, this is not a leg. Lego stuff is pretty spot on with the tolerance levels, but this one's kind of like the quality control could be a little bit better. So I got the axle lined up with the peg hole, but the peg hole is too small. And it doesn't want to go in, and it's, <laughs> it's bumming me out. <laughs> this is my OCD because I, I want to get it perfect. Um, God damn it, come out. All right, this is where a lot of you are turning off the video, moving on. Okay. Yeah, so if you look, there's one axle here. It's nice and clean. And the other, one, other one's malformed. It's just a fat, short stub. So already this thing's losing points. Um, the quality isn't as nice as like a legit Lego. So that's disappointing, but uh, let's continue on with this build. And I can't line it up again. This is ridiculous. All right, I apologize that this video is this video is not turning out the way I thought it'd be. Um, God. Yeah, this is very frustrating. Um, doesn't help that the pieces are malformed because if it was, it would be very much more painless procedure. There we go, I got back in. All right, so the one axle, I'm gonna have to live with it. The one axle's too big, it's not fitting into the socket. The other one's fitting all right. At least I got the tires on. Okay, so once we got that on, our next step is, I think the motorcycle looks fine like this, to be honest. All this weird like armor pieces look kind of crazy. So we're gonna go one side. It's gonna have two of these pieces. Um. All right, four. Okay, there's an issue here, I think. All right, so we have this. And then we're going to attach to these. So we have these two, um, these two angled, we have a wing piece here and these two, um, I can't remember what these are called. Like these are almost considered headlight bricks, I believe in the normal world of Lego. 
or headlight plates. Because normally you fix these on the front of the cars. Okay, so I think this is right. So, so far the tolerances, it's, the pieces fit pretty snug with each other. Um, it doesn't feel like one those weird knockoff brands. Uh, so that's, it, that's a plus. I mean, even though the, the, I had problems with the wheel, the, the at least the plates are, are snapping in in place like you expect a Lego to, you know, actually feel like. And then we have to t fix these on top. Now this is where I think it's getting over bit overkill. Um, it seems pretty fine the way it was. It seems like you're, you're, all this kind of stuff that's going on to the kit right now is just too much. And then we have this. I don't know what I'm building right now. Right, so here's the exhaust. I believe I'm I'm putting assembling. It doesn't help that these pieces are black, so I apologize if this is harder to see. I'll try to be a little bit more mindful of what I'm putting on camera. Um, all right, so this is what I got so far. Like I said, it, it looks overkill. It looks like the motorcycle is fine without all this crap. And. Uh, now we're building up, I believe, the seat. It's like almost 10.30 p.m. right now as I'm building this. I have like a work meeting at 9. So it's kind of like I'm hoping I can finish this soon so I go to bed. I'm tired. I have like a Zoom call. And it sucks because sometimes I get the urge to go hunting for figures before my zoom call and my zoom call on Wednesdays is always at nine o'clock in the morning so if I get up early enough I always try to like run to like Walmart or Target to see if there's any new toys before my meeting but I think that comes with the hobby you know if you're like if you're addicted to the the plastic like I am um you know you'll go through great lengths to just run to the store and see what's available yeah, this is looking kind of wild. It seems like I was just happy with the, the the plain motorcycle chassis, but now you're adding all this excess crap on it. And uh, this um, 2x4 plate, you place it on top of here, but then it doesn't remain level because of the handlebar. So it's slightly tilted, which for, for me seems like a Lego no-no. Um, okay, so we got that. Yeah, so if looking at this, this is really overkill. It seems like there's, it's like they're overthinking this, this build. And then when you get to the front, uh, with the windscreen and there's these cannons, the build gets a little bit ridiculous. And I'm going to attach these weird looking guns on the front. Now, how many people that build Lego out there are pretty OCD ab about like building their Legos? Like, do you make sure that the Lego li um, logos are always lined up with each other or if there's mold lines, if they're like straight? I don't get that nuts, but um, I could be. And let's see how fast I could do this. Get this done with. This is a very unique piece. I don't I don't recall ever seeing anything like this in like normal world of Lego. And I think the reason is is because <laughs> this piece here it's 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 malformed. Um the windscreen is supposed to attach to this. This is I believe supposed to be a one by one brick, but it's missing one half. So it's not going to it's supposed to go on top of here, but here's the front side, but it's missing the back. So it's, if you look at it, the mold's all kind of distorted. 
So already I'm running to issues because I can't attach the windscreen to this properly. That's, that's ridiculous. All right, already, whoa. And it's, I fell off my table. All right, so we're back. Um, this video is running very long. <laughs> it's only like 44 pieces and it's, this video is like 35 minutes. Okay. All right, so we got this. Where the hell do the handlebars go? All right, I'm already upset because this isn't shaping out like I thought it would. Yeah, so I'm. This, I am not liking the fact that. Where where does this go? Yeah, so the tolerance of some of these pieces, um, it varies. Some feel really snug and fit, like you know, you, like you'd expect out of a Lego kit. Others feel like it's not so much. It's kind of bothersome, to be honest. All right, so this really bothers me. The fact that this is like one of the most important pieces right here, this one by one brick, but it's the it didn't mold. The mold's not correct. It looks, it's like malformed and. I can't attach the windshield correctly now. Um, I might have to. Yeah, this sucks. There's no way I could get this on. Uh, I'm trying to look at. I have some Lego sets in front of me. I'm trying to see if I can find a similar piece. Uh, I don't see one. Right, we're gonna have to improvise, try to figure out a way to make this windscreen fit. All right, it's not perfect. It's kind of cheating, but this will have to do for now. And the instructions don't tell you where to place the sticker, so you have to rely on the um, the box art. So I had to make some modifications to get the windscreen to fit on properly on here, and it's still not working right. Um, I gotta figure out this later. Unless I, could, I gotta find a piece somewhere. Yeah. Um, let's wait. Right, so I have a Lego UCS Y-Wing in front of me that's not on camera, but I'm going to remove a piece off of it just to get the windscreen on. Okay, so... And this... Oh, the pieces keep on falling apart. Yeah, so the, the tolerances on these pieces aren't isn't the greatest at all. Um, let me just swap this around. Then she, the instructions are clear and all, but I'm not liking I'm not liking the way this stuff is fitting. All right, so I found a one by one plate right there, and we'll just use that for now. If I get that to work, I can't get that to work either. This is not good. reverse this okay there we go all right so it's not bad it's not great but it's not bad all right so if this worked out the way it's supposed to this piece here plates on top of there but it didn't 
so here is now how does snake eyes fit on this okay this is bullocks um <laughs> This is this is ridiculous. All right, so you, you go through all these great lengths to build this ridiculous motorcycle, and Snake Eyes doesn't fit anywhere on here. Um, there's nowhere there's nowhere for him to sit. Uh, he, the handlebars are adjusted too far, and it seems like the only way to get him to work is if you just even that. His feet are so long that you can't place them in here versus a normal Lego fig, which you could. See? Okay, so, yeah, very, <laughs> it's a very weird kit. Um, in all honesty, if you just took all this crap off, like this, this is all you really need, and the figure would probably fit better. And again, the, if the figure won't fit in here because the feet are too long. You should be able to just slide the figure in here, but it doesn't work. If you take a normal Lego figure, it slides in. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm speechless. This is this kit is weird. Um, all right, yeah. So let's start wrapping this up. <laughs> I'm getting kind of frustrated. None of this is shaping out the way as I hoped it would. Um, very disappointed. I, I'm disappointed in the build quality, but I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, there's a reason why Lego is like the premier building block system versus something like this. Um, this design, it's over, it's overly thought out. Uh, it, the figure, all right, I love the Snake Eyes minifig. Uh, for the price of $9.99, I think it's worth it alone just for this little guy. And it might seem pricey for some people, but if you dabble in the world of, of Lego, just the minifigs alone, you know, cost a lot of money. And the fact that this is actually a legit licensed Snake Eyes minifig, albeit he's not the same quality as like a legit Lego, this is still an official Hasbro endorsed minifig of Snake Eyes. So I think for $9.99, the price of this is, is decent. And even though the, the motorcycle is kind of bunk, um, at least you get extra pieces to, you know, just use this for something else. I love this, the plain motorcycle without all that extra crap. The chassis is cool and the wheels. So, let's wrap this up. If I had to rate this numerically, um, Mike, I was excited to see it, disappointed after I built it. Uh, so, I want to give this a, a, a six, and that's being generous. It's worth it for this guy. I love this small little motorcycle piece. All these extra pieces I'll probably just use on a Star Wars kit or something. But it, the novelty of it is what really reeled me in. Um, it was a pleasant surprise. I didn't expect that there was any more G.I. Joe building kits. And the fact that this thing is official. Um, uh, I'm, I mean, it's it is what it is. Um, I'm, I'm excited to have it. I'm glad I bought it. So, we'll do the His Tank some other day. Um, that might take a little bit longer, and I'm kind of hesitant on doing a live build of that just because of all the problems I ran into with this. Alright, so do I recommend this? Um, yes. If you are a G.I. Joe collector, I think it's an interesting piece to add to your collection. It's not very expensive. It's... Only $9.99. I think it's even cheaper than buying like one of those retro figures that they have released right now at like um, Walmart. It's cool alone just for the boxed art. I mean, look at it. It's the old school G.I. Joe graphic and it looks cool. It's very weird because the motorcycle is too big and it doesn't fit Snake Eyes at all. Um, you know... What I'd probably do, in all honesty, is if, it, if the lower torsos are compatible, I'd probably find a, a black lower torso from a, like a legit Lego fig. And let's see if it fits. And that snap, and it doesn't fit either. It's the, the, the tolerance isn't there. Because it seems like the only way you can get the snake eyes to fit on here is if you use the original Lego leg, just because the feet are the proper proportions. But the fact that he doesn't stick on here, very disappointing. So I don't know. This thing's a mess all around. 
Yeah, so if you if you want if you bought this, I wouldn't hate you on it. In fact, it's like I said, I'd encourage you to buy this. Just be prepared for what you're getting into. Um, I ran into issue, quality control issues with some with one one of the more important bricks not actually being molded right. The fact that Snake Eyes doesn't fit onto the finished build properly bothers me. But I, th I love this minifig. Kind of wish it came with weapons, but I, oh well. You know, there's enough Lego weapons out there that I could find a pair of swords for them or guns. Um, yeah, so it, all in all, excited about it, but disappointed in the end. But still excited that I have a Snake Eyes minifig, so I'm conflicted. <laughs> So I don't know. This, if you see this, buy it. And if you don't like it, just yell at me in the comments. I don't. I don't care. Okay, this part of the video um, I'm filming later. Um, I just want to make a correction <clears throat> on something I stated earlier. So in earlier in the video, I was talking about the certain line of um, Hasbro licensed um, building building sets that were like made during the 2000s and early 2010s. And I initially said that they were manufactured by Kobe, and I take that back. They were actually manufactured by a company called Oxford. Um, I get the two companies confused. So there's Oxford, which makes their own brand of um, Lego-style bricks, and then there's Kobe, who makes uh, Kobe, that's C-O-B-I, and they make their own line of building uh, brick sets. And I just want to clear that for, clarify that for you in, in the... In the event that you're curious about seeking these other sets out, um, whether it's the Hasbro Transformers or G.I. Joe, or if you're just curious about what kind of sets Oxford makes or what kind of sets Kobe makes, as I've stated before, both companies produce licensed properties and the build qualities aren't the same as Lego, but they're comparable and you, you get stuff that Lego doesn't touch. Um, like I believe, I want to say it's Kobe that makes World of Tanks and they make some military vehicles. Oxford, they make um, more like historical sets. So, you know, those are alternatives to like Lego sets. Seek them out online. Um, if you have questions, leave comments um, in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them. But yeah, I just wanted to correct that. Uh, just in case, you know, you wanted to seek out these third-party Lego brands. Um, I didn't want to misdirect you, so... Uh, once again, thanks for checking this video out. Um, if you see this, buy this, but just, you know, be prepared. It's not at the same quality of Lego, but at the same time, it's still legit G.I. Joe. So take care, and I'll see you later.